Speaksies. Welcome to Origin of Speaksies. I'm Steve here with my good friend Scott. Tonight we're going to do the origin and history of the word hobo. Incredibly fun word to say and discuss. So if you like the word hobo, you're in the right place. <laughs> Speaking of like, please like and subscribe to Origin of Speaksies on YouTube. Um, give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts. And if you really like the show, or frankly, if you hate the show, we don't care. We'll take your money either way. Become a Speaksies supporter, patreon.com slash Speaksies. So, Scott, um, you yeah. and I kind of keep a list of words and th- phrases and things that we want to look at. One I've had on my list for a while is one of my favorite words, hobo. I agree. It's a great word. I also like that it's coming after a word that everybody hates, woke. I think people, whether they want to admit it or not, love the word hobo. It's a great word. So It's it's fun to say. You told me you were going to do this one, and I was like, wait, I was just thinking like today or or yesterday that it would be a great word to do. So do us proud, man. I will do us proud. I will do us hobo proud. So um, (laughs) hobo is one of those words that I, I mean, I don't think hobo as an, is an idea or a thing that happens isn't as much uh, current and we'll discuss that too, but it's a word that, I mean, I use often of describing yeah. someone as acting like a hobo, eating like a hobo. And I think when you, when you say the word, we all picture immediately what a hobo looks like. Sure. You see someone shabbily dressed, they have a stick with a bandana on the end. It's called a bindle, <laughs> by the way, um, hanging out at railroads um, mm-hmm. And it's also something that's fallen out of fashion because I think it's associated with homelessness. And there, yeah. like, like any good lie, there's a bit of truth to that. Um, hobos are homeless, but not in ways that we currently conceive homelessness. And we'll, we'll talk about that too. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give the etymology of hobo. I'm going to give us some hobo history, including the hobo code, which logically came from the actual hobo union. Um, I'll talk about why we all have the image of the hobo with the bindle. And finally, I will give my two cents on whether hobo is an offensive term or not. Mm, I can't wait. And I'm already learning things because I really just thought a hobo was another way to say a bum or homeless person. So we will already you have already debunked that. We've already debunked. And we've only had to start this like four times to get to this point too. So a little inside baseball for everyone watching. And I just have to get this out of the way. So yeah. if you're if you're if you're not watching on YouTube, but one of the things that you get from going to YouTube, you know, because we're trying to get people to know we have a YouTube channel mm-hmm. and get get people on YouTube, is I've just realized how painfully obvious it is that I have my shirt on backwards. Like not like, so if you're watching, mm-hmm. please get if you're wondering if something looks weird. I feel like a hobo right now. And that's the way I would use the word because I look like my clothes don't fit. It is because my shirt's on backwards and I'm not going to change it. So it's okay. With that said, you should, if you really want to see that, you can go to our YouTube. That's right. And next week I'll wear something backwards too, just to draw. We'll, we'll keep it going there to to intrigue people to come. But Mm -hmm. Scott, we're going to, you're going to learn more about hobo. And I think um, I've learned, I don't want to spoil too much, but I don't, I see the word hobo in a much more positive light than I did before. So what is a hobo? First, we're going to go to Oxford's, Oxford Learner's Dictionary. And if you're wondering why I didn't go to the Oxford English Dictionary, it's because you have to pay for it, and I'm cheap. So from the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, hobo, a person who travels from place to place looking for work, especially on farms. Also, tramp, a person with no home or job who travels from place to place, usually asking people in the street for food or money. Hmm. So you mentioned earlier, um, I think you said you you said bum or tramp in association with mm-hmm. hobo. And regardless, um, those are kind of three terms that seem to be used a lot for the same thing. Um, hobo, tramp, bum kind of used interchangeably. And as you study the history of hobos and the origin of hobos, you'll see this quote from H.L. Mencken um, from his The American Language in 1937. Tramps and hobos are commonly lumped together but see themselves as sharply differentiated. A hobo or beau is simply a migrant laborer. He may take some longish holidays, but sooner or later he returns to work. Lower than either is the bum, who neither works nor travels, 
save when impelled to motion by the police. Poor bum. Poor bum. So I like how like tramps and hobos. Yeah. Like just so she can see like, you know, I might be a tramp. I might be a hobo. But at least I'm not a bum. There's some pride there. There's some pride. There, there. is some pride. That's a, that's a good way to look mm-hmm. at it. And I kind of look at it as like one of those things that, you know, sometimes people will try to, you know, raise their station by saying how they're different from other people. Like I can think some modern examples, you know, I'm not a fat asshole who sits on his computer and spouts things on Twitter. I'm an activist. Oh, I thought you were gonna say podcaster. Yeah, because, activist. Yeah, yes, or you know, exactly. I'm not a I'm not a white supremacist. I'm alt right. Yes. Something. Right. Or I'm not a dirty, filthy, smelly hippie. I'm an activist. <laughs> I've just realized that I apparently have a very hard spot for for activists, um, with the exception yeah. of Robert Banquet and the work that he does against Kate. <laughs> so right. So as I did some reading, um, I agree with the idea um, that true hobos are, you know, more than just tramps who are just laying around or bums who are apparently the worst people on the earth. And I'm not the only one who feels that way. So from an article from Lisa Hicks at CollectorsWeekly.com, don't call them bums, the unsung history of America's hardworking hobos. I think you can uh, tell where she's going to land on this. Quoting from Lisa. Pro hobo. She is pro hobo. That should be a new, a new term we should get out there. Hobos are not bums. Hobos fully embrace the Protestant work ethic, bouncing from place to place, looking for short term jobs to help earn their keep while bums and tramps just want to bum everything, money, food, and cigarettes. But freeloading oh, tramps yeah. and hardworking hobos have one thing in common. Both traveled the rails starting in the 19th century, much much to the chagrin of railroad owners. This reminds me a bit of a little bit about when we talked about carnies mm-hmm. and they didn't want to be called carnies. Right. There's like this whole, uh, you know, like you said, is it just changing a term or is it like, no, there's actually like in your head, you just think of anybody that paints their face as a carny but it's like no there's the yeller or what i actually don't remember go, i gotta go back and listen to the episode but yeah. the barkers then right. there's the ones you know the clowns the ones with the talent um that sounded bad but yeah same hey. with this so it sounds like just because you're hopping a train going somewhere mm-hmm. i like to that quote that she said where bums are always bumming so yeah you know, that's like that's a good right. way to think about it hey can i bum this whereas the hobos they have that i think you said the hobo code earlier which i right. also like um so this is interesting. Yeah. So she also talks about a couple of the character caricatures that you have of, of hobos. One is the sad sack with saggy pants, a five o'clock shadow and a bindle probably passed out with a bottle of whiskey, you know, something that's very interchangeable with a bum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the other is um, kind of the freedom aspect of it, you know, jumping on box cars, wandering town to town, no roots or commitment, hanging out on the rails, meeting other hobos. Um, and she also mentioned some famous uh, people who spent some time as hobos, hmm. including Woody Guthrie, mm-hmm. Dirty Hippie. So it was a bad example for me to start with. But um, on the other spectrum, Ernest Hemingway, Louis L'Amour, Clark Gable, and somebody by the name of Winthrop Rockefeller, hmm. which a uh, Rockefeller I've never I've never heard of. But Winthrop w- Rockefeller, you've just said I can't even say it. It's, yeah. it's the, the whitest name I've ever heard. That is a pretty Caucasian name. Yeah. And can I just say my favorite hobo? I don't know if there's a section we're going to talk about that, but I don't want to forget, which is Cookie from, do you remember Bozo the Clown? Yes. I don't know if you were a Bozo the Clown guy, but Chicago Mm -hmm. had the local show and my grandparents, it it came on to whatever, what's the Chicago like super WGN. Thank you. It can't, they started putting it on WGN. And my grandparents would tape it for us because mm. we didn't have cable. And mm-hmm. we'd come visit. we just watch a bunch of it. And remember, a Cookie was like the hobo clown. He had the bindle. He had like the the five o'clock shadow painted okay. on, the sad nose or whatever. Um, in retrospect, Bozo and Cookie seem extremely creepy if you watch mm-hmm. those. But at the time, hey, man, that was, the, that was the age of innocence where clowns, you know, you were just like, oh, is this weird weird sad clown which was kind of entertaining i kind of liked it it is it is something i miss that i've always in some sort of delusion i'd have to bring back one of those sort of shows 
like to have like the local television show where you have the local character um, yeah. that I like. Those are like the, the late night horror movie hosts. Like yeah. in Hampton Roads, we had Dr. Mad Blood for years. Oh. It just looked like a fun thing to do. But I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought up clowns. Clowns will uh, come back up later and figure very prominently in the story of hobos. Gotcha. So you mentioned some uh, hobo names that you like or a hobo that you like. So I'm going to give you some hobo names that I picked up uh, <laughs> during my research. And a lot of this, I will give credit as much as I can. But when in doubt, um, it's from Lisa Nix's very well-researched, very in-depth article on hobo. So some uh, hobo names I picked up. Steam Train Mori. I like it. The Pennsylvania Kid. Related, the Hard Rock Kid. Okay. So these are, wait, are these real or are these ones you came up with? No, these are real hobo names. And that's I'm what's sorry. fun about them is they sound like something I could have just uh, put together right now. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to with two more. Slow Motion Shorty. Oh, that's the best one yet. And maybe my favorite, Connecticut Slim. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a pimp from Bridgeport. It sounds like a high yeah. level uh, uh, Ivy League pimp. <laughs> pimp from Bridgeport. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. I like them all. I feel like all of them, though, could also be the name of like a, a pool shark. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a, uh, um, oh, what's the other one that I was thinking of? Like a rapper or something? But I was the... thinking that or thinking maybe a boxer, too. Boxer. That's what I was thinking. Something. Except for slow slow motion Sally or whoever it was, Shorty. Sure. Slow motion mm -hmm. Shorty is pretty good because I, I can't put that into the uh, the boxer or uh, you know the other ca the the pool shark yeah. category. So, but that definitely could be a, a member of the Funky Bunch or <laughs> yeah. someone opening for Lil Nas X, <laughs> right? In the next few months. So, keeping with uh, the positive things of being a hobo, I, you know, there's kind of the the romantic idea of being free, riding the rails, getting a chance just to go do what you want when you want. Um, and I'm sure there's some unintended consequences of that if there's a Mrs. Uh, Connecticut Slim at home. Mm -hmm. um, probably doesn't like her husband doing that. Probably doesn't like anything her husband's doing with a name like Connecticut Slim. But, right. you know, I think one of the reasons hobo kind of resonates is you know, not just bums walking around with a bindle, but um, freedom, especially in a time where, um, you know, pre uh, airplanes, you know, the way to get around was a railroad. And we'll talk more about railroads as we go on. Well, there's also to talk about the freedom thing for a minute. You mm -hmm. know, we've talked previously about I know in our Halloween episode, we were talking about how people could get away with murders and stuff. There's there's a lot more you could sort of do um, to you could cover your tracks, right? So mm -hmm. on the same, on the same um, sort of idea, if you wanted to escape your life, <laughs> yeah. I mean, now it'd be hard, harder, right? Because like you've talked about moving to Australia, mm -hmm. um, not seriously, but if you had yeah. to, right? And I've talked about Alaska, but back then, I mean, there, there was no internet. There was no whatever. You hop a train, you're gone. Nobody's ever going to find you, grow a mustache or shave your mustache, right. uh, one or the other. And next thing you know, you're, you may be having to like find work town to town. You may smell like ass or whatever, mm -hmm. but you escaped whatever your crappy life was. <laughs> I could see the appeal yeah. in that potentially. I definitely, I definitely see the appeal. In it. And I think it's something, I don't know that we've lost, but like you mentioned, yeah. if we want, if I wanted to go somewhere and again, we're both parents, it's probably not good that we right. can't disappear, but there's no, there's no way to function without, being online nowadays or have, you know, you'd have to ditch your, your tracking device. You'd have to, you couldn't get money out anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would be, it would, it would, I don't think it is something that's lost. I it mean, would be hard to be a hobo for sure. You could be a mm -hmm. bum, no problem, I guess. But oh, yeah. to be, a, to actually function, it, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think it, function's a keyword. And again, the, mm -hmm. the, the hobos trying again to be, maybe put a positive spin on what they do. But um, as we see with the hobo code later, um, you know, hard work is, is a big part of that. So one of the things I really liked about um, this word is the etymology of it. And it's something um, that you, as I did my research, you come across a lot of big names pretty quickly. Uh, Michael Quinion, Anatoly Lieberman, um, our patron saint, Barry Popick, who if you look on our uh, Twitter page, you can find Speaksies um, on Twitter and Instagram at Speaksies. Um, you'll notice that Barry Popick is the sun that's shining down on both of us. 
in our picture. So we love some Barry Poppick. So lots of big names, and they all mostly agree that it's of an unknown origin. Um, you'll see it's vaguely, its first use is vaguely noted as um, happening in the late 1800s, is, I think is how Word Detective puts it. So it's kind of know when it started to show up in the lexicon, but not how it came about. So as you do research, you're going to see a lot of things um, kind of overlap, the same discussions over and over. And I will come out with a theory that I have on the origin of it. So starting from Edam Online, Hobo, a tramp, uh, known as 1889, Western U.S. of unknown origin, um, English dialectal hawbuck, lout, clumsy fellow country bumpkin, or possibly from Hoboy, a worker's call in the late 19th century on Western U.S. railroads. Hmm. Okay. So a lot. Some people think it comes from just a uh, hawbuck. You know, come calling somebody a bumpkin, and it kind of evolved into hobo. Um, and hoboy. We'll hear a little bit more about that. And to be clear, hoboy has nothing to do with working for Connecticut Slim. Okay. I want to be very clear or about slow that. motion uh, shorty or anything. Well, maybe for slow motion shorty. <laughs> you know, the I, I don't know anything about the etymology of this, uh, but for in. For some reason, I was wondering if there was some tie into the word bohemian. I don't know why, because if you think about bohemian as sort of like just living like mm -hmm. a, maybe artist, it doesn't really um, have a structure as much. I don't know. Maybe that's not even the definition. No, that of is. Thank you but, for that. No, that actually is something that comes up in the etymology oh, okay. of I, I actually uh, don't talk about that much. So I'm glad you did bring it up. So um, you'll see the term hobohemia um, as a reference to bohemians, bo uh, you know, hobohemia being a derivative of that, a silly one, um, but getting to the community aspect, the freedom aspect of it, you actually do see that come up. Hobohemia, hobohemia. sounds either like a blood disorder or mm -hmm. like an album by uh, like an insane clown posse album. You know, okay. it, that is a, that is a good word. I we'll like. have to look that up. And maybe um, as we'll talk later about hobo camps, which are called jungles, maybe mm -hmm. that was, you know, something, that people desire to find their own hobohemia. For sure. So on to the etymology, um, looking at Michael Quinion's worldwide words, quoting from him, the word in its modern form was first recorded in the Northwestern U.S. Here's the first example that I know about, which comes from Ellensburg Capital in Washington State in November 1889. The tramp has changed his name, or rather had it changed for him, and now he is a hobo. And he also notes that a uh, hobo is capitalized in that. So it kind of gives the idea that it was a proper name, that hobo mm -hmm. was a thing that was known by there. Makes sense. Um, he also uh, references, as Edam Online did, uh, the parallels with hawbuck and hawbaw, um, clumsy fellow or a bumpkin. Um, and he also uh, discusses that it came from a greeting hobo, um, as in ho-bo, like he's my bow. I'm Scarlett mm. O'Hara. He's my beau. Okay. That's my, well, my hey, southern Clark lady. Gable. Clark yeah. Gable could have started that when he was hoboing. Very good. And also noted as a, a challenger greeting used by railway workers, calling saying hoboy. Yeah, that one. That the whole thing about like saying hobo, hoboy, hoboy, like mm. that makes a lot of sense because you could. It sounds like a greeting, you know, saying hobo, yeah. hoboy. You can you can hear that. And. That is a perfect lead up to where I think the origin comes from. And again, Ooh. quoting from Worldwide Words, this origin may be supported, the origin of Hoboy being used, by a sentence that Barry Poppick found in the New Orleans Picayune of 18, August 1848. A year's bronzing and hoboying about the mountains of that charming country called Mexico has given me a slight dash of the Spanish. <laughs> so... I'm okay. maybe a little bit more interested in what is the slight dash of the Spanish, because that right. sounds like something you could get spending time on a railroad. Um, right. So, um, but uh, Michael Quinion also notes that uh, Random House Dictionary of American Historical Slang points out that um, even if that was the first, the real usage in 1848, it's not really used again for about another 30, 40 years. So it, mm. you know, there is a big gap um, that comes into that. Okay. Well, I'm in a good mood though, because you've just brought up, we don't get, I mean, we get Quinny on a lot. Mm -hmm. We don't bring up Poppick as much recently, it seems like. So I'm so glad you've brought him back to the show. Yeah. That makes me, I'm in a good mood. Good. Well, you're going to stay in a good mood and I'm going to go to one more resource. It's one that you turned me on to recently. Green's Dictionary of Slang. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you um, their second definition of hobo, a tramp, a vagrant, an itinerant worker, often using the U.S. rail system as a means of free transport. And they quote um, a newspaper from 1888. So a year earlier, Michael Quinion's first example that he found, um, but it's from the Morning Oregonian. Oregonian? People of Oregon, whatever that word is, figure it out because mm -hmm. I can't say it. So to quote from them, I see by your puzzled look that you do not understand what a hobo is. I will tell you what we mean by the term. It is used as a word to classify all tramps and vages. Vages? Vages. So I pondered that for a while and mm -hmm. believe that that is a shortening of vagrant. Okay. That but, makes sense. Yeah. It's fun to say vag. It is very fun to say vag. Pour and, some out for uh, Adrian... Appalucci and Sarah oh. Tolomash, the greatest podcast ever. That we might have on killed. hiatus. Yeah, I think we accidentally <laughs> we we jinxed, but I don't want to talk about that right now. So that's another that's an maybe we'll talk an uncut about how that how that all went down. Yeah, we we could do that. So um, we talked about tramps and vages, mm -hmm. and I uh, noted this was the second definition given by Green's Dictionary of slang. So I'm going to give yes. you the first definition: the penis. Figurative use of the sense, i.e., it wanders around. Like a wandering womb, but but the penis. A little bit. And if you think no. that's great, that's good enough just to say the word penis and hobo together. It's about to get better. Um, so that they uh, cite this use from a book that I'd never heard before. Now, you know I'm a big fan of books with really long, extravagant yeah. titles. But sometimes... Yes a really just concise book title can tell you everything you need to know. So um, they give two references from a book, a book called The Whorehouse Bells Were Ringing and Other Songs Cowboys Sing. <laughs> okay. And uh, give you just a quick review of this book um, by Professor Rick Seibert, uh, Department of English of Nebraska Wesleyan University. Um, this uh, the Whorehouse Bells Were Ringing and Other Cowboy Songs Sing is a collection um, of cowboy songs um, put together in 18, pardon me, 1989 um, by a gentleman by the name of Guy Lodgson. So um, a quick snippet of the review. Readers whose sensibilities allow them to get beyond this book title and songs like Peter Pullen Blues and Honky Tonk Asshole <laughs> will recognize what a valuable contribution Logston has made to the fields of folklore, et cetera, et cetera. That's amazing. I was thinking it was going to be like the whorehouse, the whorehouse bells were ringing mm -hmm. was like in the title because all the rest of the songs were like about beans. You know yeah. what I mean? But there's some good stuff in there. Honky tonk asshole. And yeah. yeah, that's good. So those were two of the reviewers favorites, but I'm going to give you two more songs. And these oh. are the songs that the term hobo is used in. The first is a song, Red Light Saloon. I pulled out my hobo and I gave her a shove. Such glorious feelings from the power above. The Red Light okay, Saloon. Okay, it's like the Huey Lewis of whatever year this was. It is. And maybe that's, well, there's another Huey Lewis story that may, might relate to a hobo later, but we'll, maybe that'll be an uncut discussion. Ooh. And one more from an oddly titled... Uh, a song, The Mormon Cowboy. Mm. He married a farmer's daughter, most beautiful, they said, who expected female sporting that night she went to bed. When she found he had no hobo, she wrung her hands and cried. And I'm sure there's another verse that comes after that that rhymes. But when she found right. he had no hobo. Yeah. And the one is, and then she found his other seven brides because he's Mormon, but, oh, um, well but played Mormon cowboy. I, I would say to this, I'm, I, I would love to say I'm surprised mm -hmm. about the whole hobo thing, meaning a being a dick thing, but mm -hmm. like, is there any word that hasn't at some point been used as a euphemism for a penis? I mean, I think yeah. it just speaks more to the power of the, the penis that right. every third word, like I could look around my room and find three words, but, that's not to take away from it. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I never would have guessed that. And since it's such a fun word to say, mm -hmm. I think there's a really strong argument to bring it back. We don't, do we need Johnson? No. I Johnson, hobo. Hobo. 
Well, one of the things I like about hobo also is, is it's a really good adjective or modifier. It yeah. takes something, a word that maybe isn't that exciting, but just makes it better. As long as like, everything's better with hobo. And I have a couple examples for you. Yes, please. And again, this is all from Green's Dictionary of Slang. A hobo cocktail. Oh, gosh. Coined in 1947, a glass of water. <laughs> That's good. Hobo coffee from 1945. Coffee made without the use of a filter, which is which one has to allow to settle before drinking. Thus, mm. very strong coffee. Mm -hmm. And one, uh, one last one. Hobo's delight. That sounds awful. It sounds really dirty, but it's not. It's a either a cigarette end or a form of stew made from alfalfa and bacon rinds. So a bit hmm. dirty, but maybe not in the sense. Hobo's delight. That that. That's amazing. Yeah, you're, you're right, though. Anything you put with hobo is is awesome. Hobo, hobohemia, mm -hmm. hobo power, hobo's yeah. delight, hobo, the coat of hobo, the coat of hobo Hammurabi. I'm trying to make something work. There. Yeah. But the, I mean, hobo, hobo tangle, tango. Hobo ta the hobo tango? Yeah. Oh my gosh. What is that? Does that mean something too? That actually does. That means um, a lockstep as forced on prisoners as regimented of a way of walking in certain <laughs> U.S. prisons. It's a magnificent word. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. You're doing the hobo tango because you're all yeah. walking in. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's, I'm sure it was very hurtful and sad at the time i can't wait to find out if this is offensive i hope we get yeah. to the end of this and you're like the word hobo is extremely ex offensive to every mm -hmm. uh you know just just wait till we've said it a bunch of times yeah but. well as we know everything's offensive the most important well, thing yeah. to take away from our show is you shouldn't say anything or do anything or think yeah. about anything all um, we have to do but, is condemn it at the end we'll condemn yeah, it. yeah we'll do that we'll, we'll denounce it denounce uh, it thank you yeah. yeah so to wrap up the etymology again uh, a lot of big names don't can't really say this is, you know, how it got in there. Um, but when in doubt, I'm going to side with Barry Popick. Um, I like his, uh, what he found in 1848 about hoboing um, as someone traveled, um, getting a slight dash of the Spanish. Maybe we need to do some more research on that at another mm -hmm. time. Um, but, you know, when in doubt, I'm going to side with our patron saint, uh, Barry Popick. Um, so I definitely have some more hobo history for us, including why we uh, the picture of the hobo that we all have in our minds when we hear that word um, is. But first, Scott has some new slang. I do have some new slang. Um, I was thinking, though, first, before we do that, about this show tonight, I was excited to do it. And I was looking at um, uh, we there's been some things I wanted to talk to you about. And I figured yeah. this would be a good time to bring up one, because when I think of a hobo. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think a, I think a hobo, whether they be a tramp or a more classy version, as, mm -hmm. as you've shown. Yes. They're not going to be the best smelling. Right. So we talk right. about dirty, dirty uh, hippies. One filthy. of your criteria, mm -hmm. filthy hippies. And we're in in just a preview. Mm -hmm. We are going to be playing our second uh, uh, ver not second version, but the second um, round, if you will, of are they a dirty, dirty hippie oh, later where I can't wait. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve has no idea who these who these uh, potential hippies are, and we're gonna have fun with that. But I was yeah. thinking there's a there's a theme to this show mm -hmm. because one of your criteria for are they a dirty dirty hippie is usually the the smell. Yeah, and hobos usually don't smell good. And so I was thinking about um, I have two animals in my house, and mm -hmm. I'm I've been fighting, especially since I've had I've had my dog to find ways to keep the house clean. You brought a revolutionary idea to me, which was I should maybe vacuum every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I was talking to you. I was like, I can't get the smell out. You're like, well, at our house, we vacuum like yeah. all the time. And I was like, and hold on to jump in by we, I mean, my, my lovely wife. <laughs> well, I wasn't like, going to, yeah. I wasn't going to say I, I'm that, not taking but, any credit for that. Um, which was a great idea. So I, uh, I had gone to get to the store to get some like, by the way, this reminded me of your brother, because I didn't even know if this existed, but mm -hmm. like some carpet fresh, because I've told the story before about how yeah. rooming with your brother in college, how you could smell the carpet fresh from like two dorms away, because he mm -hmm. would use a whole box on our little dorm room, um, which, which, frankly, I don't blame him. He was the only one trying to keep the place clean because he lived with me. Um, but I was I was looking at it and I, I was laughing because I've noticed before, have you ever noticed that sometimes there are like little blurbs on 
products that you buy that really don't help. They don't need to be there mm -hmm. or do they? And I'm going to give you some examples of this okay. because I start, I've started thinking about this. And one was um, like for, I'll get back to the smell thing, but like yeah. when you're, when you're looking at like food products and it says something like no added MSG. Yeah. It's like, you didn't have, like, I wasn't even thinking about MSG. I don't know what MSG is. And that's after doing a few Google searches. Right. I just know that it's supposed to not be good. But when you say no added MSG, mm -hmm. now I'm thinking about MSG. Same thing when right. it's like no cholesterol. I'm like, it's not the eighties. Like nobody cares about and cholesterol. Right. Nobody, nobody's like making their purchasing decisions based on whether or not there's cholesterol. Now I'm just thinking about cholesterol. Yeah. But the best is too, when it's um like some, crappy cereal and it's like you know lucky charms is a fat-free product and you're like right. bring it on i mean yeah i want to lose some weight you have some lucky charms but the worst most egregious ex example getting back to the scent thing is i was um looking at this this uh stuff to put into my cat's litter box okay and it like to help it smell fresher. And I, I mean, I do what I'm supposed to do. I, right. I replace it and everything, but every time I replace it, I put this stuff in mm -hmm. and I saw they had a new one. And this one said attacks both urine and feces odors. <laughs> and I thought to myself, like, why do you like, why would anyone not want that? Like, mm. I'll just take the urine only. Yeah. Like what, what, in what scenario? It's the same brand. They cost the same, but one is attacks both urine and, but if you ever look, they change up. There's like 20 different descriptors of like the same cat. You don't have a cat. Trust me. People mm -hmm. that have cats know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. I don't know. This one has 24 seven protection. Does, so does it, what does that mean? Like right. the one that doesn't say 24 seven only, pr only attacks odor during the day. I don't know. Right. But thinking now as i speak it out loud maybe it is a genius thing that they put attacks both urine and feces odor because now i'm i'm like i have to buy that one because i'm assuming the rest have just right. chosen one or the other right so am i nuts or is that just sort of unnecessary no, I, or weird or is it I, brilliant i don't know i think it's uh, it's unnecessary but it also makes me think of what we talked about with uh, hobos and tramps like someone saying you know mm. i'm not a tramp i'm a hobo so you know i don't just you know get rid of cat stink i attack urine and fecal matter right and making sure that you know they do that and it might have been one of those things that they realized they probably all use the same ingredients and someone just hadn't just put that out there yet because it's definitely going to yeah. get in your mind that of if you ever smell anything in your house if you don't have the one that attacks urine and poo smells that you're gonna you're gonna be wondering what happened you know what yeah. mistake have i made absolutely i'll never go back to to a urine only cat odor baking Never. soda powder thing. So with that, uh, thanks for hearing me out with that. I wanted to get that off my chest. Um, I get to do some new slang. New slang when you notice the All right. So I haven't done a new slang in a while and mm -hmm. I had a bunch that have been piling up. And the one that I want to do today is either shipping ship I ship mm -hmm. different ways to say it, depending on how you say it. And what I love is I love a new slang where I I got caught and busted because I didn't know what it meant. So I, oh, no. my younger sister, mm -hmm. who's eighteen or nineteen, I'm not sure, was we were talking about some anime. So one of the things I've been like, I'm not an, what you would call an anime guy, really. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably look like one, but I'm not. But um. My daughter likes anime. So I mm -hmm. so one thing I do, because I don't know about you, but like anime has that weird, like especially Japanese anime has that weird yeah. quality where even if it's like PG, it feels dirty for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Do you, I, you know what I mean? Right. I know exactly what you mean. I keep waiting. to. See, I've read enough about tentacles and, and <laughs> animate and just expect to see something um, ungodly happen at any moment. Red. But yeah, so I so I want to make sure that I'm screening whatever anime right. stuff there is before my daughter watches it as she's an impressionable 11 year old. So we've been watching this anime called Demon Slayer. OK, well, good, <laughs> which is entirely inappropriate, but we watch it together. And she's yeah. like and it is weird, too, how how uh, I don't know as a parent how you are, but I, I tell you. If it's something sexual mm -hmm. or even remotely, I'm like, yeah. cut it off. If it's violence, I'm like, yeah, it just popped. Up. Are you are you OK? Are you freaked out? 
I'm fine. And then yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's fine. Like I'm tra I'm traumatized, but I'm getting off the off the subject. So we've been watching this anime, mm -hmm. and and my sister Madeline also watches it. And so she said, Oh, I ship and named two characters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, What'd you just say? She's like, I ship them. I, mm -hmm. And of course, you're like, and ship is one of those words too that could sound like many words. And I'm yeah. like, what does it mean? Yeah. So and when I told you, you hadn't heard of it either, right? I thought you said ice ship, like the right. Titanic. I was very confused and old. Ice ship them. This one will make mm -hmm. you feel old. And it comes from, you had talked about when we did, uh, um, what's the what's the one where, not glow up, it's, it, it's the one that comes from fandom and those two guys were like, came out as gay. And then there mm -hmm. what was the new slang, do you remember? Oh, that was Hits Different. Hits different. This reminds me of that one in okay. that it was born in fandom culture. Mm. So if you don't know what that is, we're not going to go too far down the fandom thing. But essentially, if you just think about there's so many things out there, communities can get together online and become nerds for a show, basically, mm -hmm. and they get really intense and you might have message boards or whatever. Um, and so the thing about shipping comes from the word relationship. Mm. So from, I stole from your, used to be your favorite source for new slang and you've sort mm. of moved on to other pastures, but I'm going to go to the tried and true business insider Ooh. for my new slang today. And uh, according to business insider quote, I ship them is the strange concept that's changing the way people talk about relationships. And this came from 2015. According to the ridiculously comprehensive fandom slang guides of the internet, the word derives from relationshipper, typically shortened to shipper. Relationshippers are people who care deeply about the romantic relationships between their favorite characters and sometimes mm -hmm. celebrities or even people in their own lives. So yeah. it's not a new concept, right? Like yeah. you have watched shows in the past or even just in real life where you're like, oh, it'd be so cute or whatever to see them get together or I really mm -hmm. want to see them get together. Like um, a Sam and Diane sort of thing. Will they or will they? Perfect example. You could look at a lot of shows from the 80s and that and that is sort of where this originated. So um, before I say the show that it really originated from, I want to mention that uh, also in this this article, they talked about how people were shipping over a hundred years ago, according to know your meme, mm. they, uh, they just weren't calling it that of course. So in 1913, right. there was a book that came out. You talked about short book titles, just called old friends, new fancies, which featured characters from Jane Austen's pride and prejudice reimagined in new relationships. Mm. So this also can take you to a weird part of the internet. Yeah. Fan fiction. Yeah. So, it's it's a cousin, I would say. To, I, I would say if you really are a shipper or right. you really ship, you you might start doing yeah. some some that, fan fiction. That shows your dedication to the to the ship. That if you're actually putting your thoughts on digital paper about <laughs> how that relationship works out. Which reminds me, did you ever finish your Sam Malone and Diane from Cheers uh, fanfic, or is that still? A work in progress or a that's whip. Still, as that's say. still working. I'm uh there's some very graphic Rhea Perlman parts that I'm still working on <laughs> that I just haven't I don't have the right tone yet, but it's it's still something that's coming along. Okay. Well, I just want you to know that I haven't forgotten about it, even Good. if you have, Thank because you. I'm hoping for for a Woody cameo in there somewhere. Um so this so basically this thing now is where like people like my 18 year old sister we'll just say that in real life, Oh, I ship those two. I ship those two. Mm -hmm. And other people know what they're talking about. Apparently. Um, part of the reason why I think that it's people like us have no idea mm -hmm. is when you, like when I was looking online for, I wanted examples like, okay, what are the most prolific right. examples of like people that not prolific, but the, the biggest examples of like who fans ship and, mm -hmm. Uh, like one of them was Harry Potter and whatever the girl's name is. I don't know if it's like Hermione or Herm. I don't know how you pronounce it, mm -hmm. but th those two. Yes. But, but most of the other ones, I'd never heard of any of the characters. So it was like, Oh, okay. I'm just definitely aged out of this. Cause all yeah. these characters are from shows I never watched, but do you have a guess? I want to, I, this, this is going to be hard, but okay. you were, you were really good with the cheers one. That was a great one. I hadn't thought okay. of. Can you think about a show that ran for a while? It has a cult following, was pretty big at the time as well. 
I would say it was, um, I mean, it's a 90s show. It may okay, have 90s, 90s show. Where people really wanted these two. There was there was a lot of, um, oh, what's the uh, the term? Hold Will on. they or won't they? Will they or won't they? But there's actually a good term I want to I want to put. Oh, UST, unresolved sexual tension. And by oh. the way, I said 90s, so this isn't who's the boss. I know that's yeah. probably where your head's going. That's where my head went first, was Tony and Angela. Heck yeah. But um, any thoughts... Uh, on who those who could have that unresolved sexual tension, male and female. I'm going to take a guess of the show Seinfeld between Jerry and Elaine. That is a fantastic guess. And I will tell you mm -hmm. when I was writing my list, because I'll ask, I'll put you on the spot, see if you have sure. anybody. And if you don't, that's fine. I The ones that I had written down, I only wrote down three. One mm -hmm. is like the most obvious because it was part of the show and it happened, which was Pam and Jim from The Office. That's like... Okay. You had to ship them, right? Mm -hmm. I mentioned Tony and Angela. Yeah. And the other third one I put was Jerry and Elaine. Because mm -hmm. I'm re-watching it and I'm like, they should have just been together. Like they're right. they're great. They're, they would be great together, but they didn't go that route. I mean, they had had the previous relationship. Mm -hmm. But the one that really started it all, and when you hear it, you'll go, ah, because this is a show that had such a cult following that they had a fandom before it really became fandom became oh. a thing. And that's the X Files. Oh, okay. So Mulder and Scully. And I didn't think about that one either, but that's actually where the term came from was in uh message boards and, and fandom with X files. They, they would, the relationshipers that were all they could think about was the two of them getting together. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, that's pretty much what shipping is. That's where it comes from. Um, that was coined in the nineties, mm -hmm. uh, for the X files. I don't know. Do you have any do you sit around and, and ship people and yeah. whether in real life or on TV? Not anymore. I mean, other than I felt like I've been kind of locked up on my uh, Sam and Diane fan fiction. I did start a little bit of Bo and Luke Duke uh, oh. fan fiction, but that's a very specific uh, literary genre and, and demographic that I'm appealing to. So I mm -hmm. think I want to get something that has a little bit more of a broader appeal completed first, but um, otherwise not, not too much time spent on that. Well, listen, man, if you and if you ever need somebody to read that the Dukes of Hazard stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, I would do it. Just yeah. saying. Like, you know, I'm not not that I would even like it. I'm just saying I would read it. Yeah. So just let me know. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say I don't like this one. I give it a thumbs down. It's too confusing and hard mm -hmm. to and I'm sorry, I'll just say it. If you say I ship them, it sounds like shit. I yeah, should, it's too. It's it's. I don't like it. I just don't like it. What about you? Yeah, I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. It's um. I wanted you to go first to say that just because I know it's your your sister uses the term. Yeah, but to me, I think once you kind of get into fan fiction of things, that's always one of those weird corners of the internet that I also expect to see tentacles <laughs> show up. And I think what also too, we talked earlier about how you put hobo in front of a word, and it generally makes it better. Hobo ship, dude, you just Not did something there. Me. You just did no. Well, hobo ship. Well, hobo ship sounds like it would be a city, mm -hmm. but we already got one of those in Hoboken, New Jersey, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's or, already a hobo city. in Hobohemia, our fantasy hobo utopia, where Sam and Diane live in your uh, yeah. in your Cheers fanfic. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, two thumbs down, but we had some fun with it. That was yeah. today's new slang. So going back to the idea that hobos are not tramps and bums, I want to discuss two important facets of hobo history. By the way, that's a sentence I don't think I ever thought I would have said out loud. To pitch uh, that to Dan Carlin. Hard, you know, you got hardcore history. Mm -hmm. Maybe behind the paywall, you get hobo history in there. Because I would absolutely listen to a podcast called Hobo History. I think I would myself. So uh, two important facets of hobo history are the hobo union and uh, something came from the Hobo Union, the Hobo Code. So back to Lisa Nix's article. Um, first, I just needed to define a term real quick, um, a hobo jungle. So uh, from Lisa's article, she quotes Linda Hughes, who's a curator of the Hobo Museum in Britt, Iowa. Um, a hobo jungle is often in a wooded area, usually by railroad tracks and by a river or creek. 
to where the hobos could gather at night, and every one of them would have to bring something to put in this pot of stew at night. Then they would sleep next to the fire. The next day, a hobo would wash his one set of clothes in the river, make sure it was clean for job hunting, and hang it up in the trees. After their clothes dried, they put them on and go look for a job. They always made sure their jungle was clean so it was ready for the next bunch of hobos who came through. I, I'd, I'd like to see if that's actually true. I'd like to see the definition of clean. I don't think I, I'm sure they, they showed some respect to it, but I don't know if clean would be the right word if for the hobo jungle. You know, it's not like you go stay at the the Marriott and the, mm -hmm. and they come do turn down service, but maybe that's just me being negative. Maybe it was really nice. Well, there actually was a hobo hotel. And honestly, there I'm leaving a lot of stuff on the table. I believe it was called the hotel gink, um, which was another term. What? Uh, for hobo that it was basically a hobo associated uh, hotel in New York or Chicago, I believe. Wow. But that shows the power of when hobos get together, including forming a union. So back to uh, Lisa Nix's article at a hobo campsite near the Baltimore and Ohio railroad line, a group of 63 hobos discussed their frustrations about getting chased out of towns and train yards or having no money or obvious employment. They concluded they need a former union. That night, they formalized the rights and duties of dues-paying union members, drawing up the papers for National Tourist Union, Taurus being another hobo nickname, number 63. And so the Dave named, Matthews Band was born. Sorry. Oh, well played. I like that. Anytime you can get a shot at Dave Matthews. Maybe that's a, a lead up for something later. Um, so uh, National Tourist Union, number 63, named after the number of hobos that were present that day. And uh, from that union... Um, at the 1889 National Hobo Convention in St. Louis, Missouri, um, the official hobo code was voted on. And this wow. is from, I'm going to read you some of uh, the hobo code, and this is from hobo.net. Of course like it's you, .net. You can find the hobo code various places, but um, and hobo.net is almost like the hobo of uh, websites, of what you imagine something called hobo.net looks like. <laughs> I mean, a if, net, if a Netscape not, nightmare is pretty much say, what it is. If there's not like Comic Sans and Lime Green involved, then I would be shocked. <laughs> so um, there's actually uh, 15 uh, points of the Hobo Code of Ethics. Not going to go through all of them. I'm going to hit a couple high points here. Please. Number one, decide your own life. Don't let another person run or rule you. Okay. Not, not too bad. Number two, when in town, always respect the local law and officials and try to be a gentleman at all times. Okay, I like that one. Nothing bad so far. Going to skip down a little bit. Number five, when no employment is available, make your own work by using your added talents at crafts. <laughs> Again, okay. work hard, Protestant work ethic of the hobo. Mm -hmm. um, number eight. Always respect nature. Do not leave garbage where you are jungling. That's good stuff. Yeah. And I'm glad we defined what uh, a jungle was before because that would be kind of strange to hear yes. that term. Yes. Um, number 10, try to stay clean and boil up wherever possible. Excuse me? Try to stay clean and do stay what now? Boil up. Boil so, up. So, so one of the other things I learned about hobos is that in their bindle, they always kept um, another set of clothes. And when we discussed the jungle earlier, um, they you heard them discuss washing their clothes and boiling. That's right. Them. So yeah. it's something that, uh, you know, a true hobo, a real hobo would have another pair of clothes because they want to get clean. They want to go look for a job. Cool. They want to be presentable. Um, number 13, do not allow other hobos to molest children. Expose all molesters to authorities. They are the worst garbage to infest any society. Okay, now this is where... It's almost like no added MSG. Yeah. There is a little bit of protesting too yeah. much. <laughs> it's like the fact that you only got 15 of these. Mm -hmm. And one of them is about the molesting thing. But all kidding yeah. aside, like, it's a good rule. I mean. Yeah. Well, it relates. To, I think rule 14 might kind of show why they said that. Okay. Rule 14 is help all runaway children and try to induce them to return home. Okay. So. So. It's good to have that one. I don't know. Is I guess it is. Yeah, it's yeah. good to have that the other one there. Well, one of the things I picked up, one of the more negative aspects of hobo society, I think every society is, there's always people that prey on the right. weak. 
Um, and you know, if someone's a runaway there, there were hobos that would take advantage and, you know, basically do a, a Connecticut slim on runaways or children, yeah. um, one way or the other. And we'll just let your imagination run with that. So, right. um, I think it's it like was, a whole decade of music that was dedicated to like, they didn't call it hobo runaways, but yeah, <laughs> rambling, rambling men and picking up hobo girls and stuff. I'll have to check out whorehouse bells are ringing because maybe there there was some more hobo references that we didn't get to. Right. So to wrap up the hobo code, I'll go with number 15, help your fellow hobos whenever and wherever needed. You may need their help someday. So nothing in the the hobo. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just said it's, it's a little golden rulish in there, you know, like doing to doing to hobos as you would have hobos doing to you. The hobo and, code. Yeah, I think it's a good way. I didn't see really anything in there um, that that made you know that that offended the me. The specific you know? thing about don't let other hobos molest children. Yeah. The only again, it, it as far as I know, unless you just didn't read it, it didn't say like don't stab somebody that hires you, right? Right. And well, it does say no violence. So I guess I guess basically they're just saying no sexual violence. Yeah. Um, well, sexual violence on other hobos is sort of like, you know, it's going to happen, but they it might be a stuff. hobo's delight or a hobo that tango. Might be the hobo tango. That was the one that got me laughing so hard before is the hobo tango. Good it's stuff. A, wow. This is good, amazing. It is. It is wonderful. I will agree with you. I wouldn't shout you down if you're like, no, you're wrong. This is crap. Everyone's wasting <laughs> their time by listening to this. But no. as we get into the word of ho- world of hobos, it, it is very amazing. And I do agree with you that there is a little bit, again, of protesting too much. You have to really call that out of uh, we don't like people molesting kids. It's like, OK, there's a backstory to that. But I guess you're right. It is realistic in that, like, of course, if if you if you found out that your kid was going to join up with the hobos, the first thing you'd probably think of is like, um, well, not the first thing, but like one of the things you'd think of is like, oh man, one of these hobos is going to touch my kid or something. Mm-hmm. So it it would be something. So yeah, to have it in the code kind of kind of makes sense. So um, earlier you mentioned Cookie the Clown. Yeah. And talk. we talked about when we hear the word hobo, we instantly think Bindle, you think the hat, you think dress shabbily, you see the five o'clock shadow, you think of railroads. Mm-hmm. Um, and this leads a little bit to is, is hobo an offensive term? Um, plant some seeds for that. So one of the reasons we all have that image um, is due to clowns. So yes. I actually was earlier this summer. And as we keep, I keep saying things I never thought I'd say maybe recorded or at all. Uh, one of the best experiences I had this summer was at the Ringling uh, Clown or pardon me, Circus Museum in Sarasota, Florida. If you're mm-hmm. in Sarasota, Definitely take time to get it. I'm not a huge circus fan, but it was it was amazing. It was a great insight, I think, mm-hmm. into circus life, but also what life was in almost like pre 1950s United States. I think it gave. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that have been la- lost over the last 50, 60, 70 years that we don't realize, um, and I think the circus kind of culture and things point back to that. So I learned that there's three types of clowns. Uh, one is the white face clown. Think what a mime looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, the other is called an Auguste clown. Um, think more of like Ronald McDonald or Bozo the clown, kind of like the red hair, the red nose, okay, that sort of thing. The flower, maybe. Yeah. And the third type of clown is the tramp, um, which is a uniquely American clown. I'm, I'm quoting here from clownantics.com. Um, a uniquely American clown. Some believe that the idea of the tramp originated with the hobos who rode the rails during the Great Depression. The classic Trant look is a sooty face with white around the eyes and mouth. They refer to coal smoke from America, America's rail yards. Um, and the tramp is played up. Uh, I mean, all clowns, I guess, are played for laughs. But uh, the kind of the the performance it would do would be, you know, forlorn, downtrodden, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe happy to be a bum, um, not clean. You know, just things that um, maybe not good stereotypes of hobos that. Yeah. If you were if if you were stereotyping a hobo, which I guess a clown really is doing that. So um, and also it might not surprise you with that being said, again, quoting from uh, Lisa Nix's article, um, going back to what uh, actually Ms. Linda Hughes said uh, from the Hobo Museum. Um, basically, hobos never liked the clowns. Um, they didn't like them. They thought it was uh, 
insulting um, how the hobo clowns kind of made themselves pitiful. Yeah. Like they needed sympathy. Um, real, real hobos didn't like that. And in fact, the museum had some hobo pushback. Um, when they put some clown artifacts at the museum, uh, now the that, clowns were. Offended. That sounds like a the worst sex move of all time. <laughs> the hobo pushback. Sorry. Hobo pushback, or maybe it's the best one. It could we'll be ask the best a one, Connecticut Slim how much that costs uh, yeah, to right. get that. Mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, hobos are uh, again something that isn't like so through clowns we know that that kind of persona and that stereotype, mm -hmm. um, and it stays around. Um, I think through circuses and clowning that kind of ingrained it because hobos uh, had a pretty strong run late 1800s but basically um, after world war ii uh, hobos declined pretty quickly um, world war ii post-world war ii bought a, a very vibrant culture and economy um, there was a social safety net that was introduced and also trains became faster um, mm -hmm. a freight a freight train as compared to like an older slower train you know, you can almost see the image of someone kind of running as it, the steam starts to right. puff um, and get on. Basically, um, that was a death sentence now. So um, sure. hobos, uh, while ingrained uh, in the culture, had a pretty swift decline, almost as swift as I went from hobo history to the end of hobos. Um, but before I finish up on hobos, I believe that you have a game for me tonight. Yes, we're doing... Uh, as I mentioned and previewed earlier, we're going to do round two of Are They a Dirty, Dirty Hippie? What's your name, son? We have some hippies out there in the Haight-Ashbury district in San Francisco. Don't you know my name? My name's Blue Boy. This fellow that was doing the talking had a haircut like Tarzan. He walked like Jane and smelled like Cheetah. You can't own property, man. All right, son. You're under arrest. I can, but that's because I'm not a penniless hippie. Yeah, there are some people here who do care. Aren't you goddamn fucking hippies? So I want you to know that, tree. There I am. I'm over there now. I'm not here anymore. My hair is green and I'm a tree. Come on, son. Even if your body does die, your mind will All right. You getting your hackles up yet? Dirty I hippies? am. I wish I had a bindle right now to be so, a hippie with. This is wonderful. As a refresher for the game, this is how mm -hmm. it works. I'm going to um, pull up. I think I have five or six this mm -hmm. time. And you simply have to determine, are they or are they not a dirty, dirty hippie? Um, and maybe you can kind of give your thoughts and criteria of, of why they are or aren't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that the way I did it was I started, I would say in my head, pretty easy. Okay. And, and then they get harder as they go, but, I, but, but who knows? All right. So let's get started mm -hmm. with, are they a dirty, dirty hippie? I can smell um, that picture. I'm sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I, you know, mm. She she looks like um and by the way if you're not watching on YouTube this would be the a, a good reason for you to get on YouTube and watch but if you're listening on audio we'll we'll talk you through it so um there's a basically a slide of a dirty hippie yeah so the first the first person I think is a kind of a slam dunk but it's just going to kind of get us get us in the hippie the hippie mood and that is um Mr Charles Manson oh so, king, king of the hippies. He is the big, he is the Moses of hippies. He is everything bad and true about hippies, yeah. sexual liberation, promoting women to, to <laughs> higher positions, to do things outside of, uh, you know, what the patriarchy allowed back then, which in his case was murder after he took advantage of them. Um, yeah. smells terrible. I mean, you can smell that picture too. Charles Manson's the worst. So I, I guess that you could easily say that, Manson's a dirty, dirty hippie. Dirty, yeah. The worst the, of the hippies, but signifies, I think, a lot of stuff that people like to brush under the rug about hippies. Yeah. So obviously he's a dirty hippie. He was the first one out just to kind of get your juices flowing. Yeah. Um, I will say that uh the guys in the back of this picture, mm -hmm. I could see one of those guys being you. If you look at their faces, especially yes. the guy on the right as you look at it, he looks like he wants to just kick Manson in the back, which I oh, that would I be mean, good. That could be some. That could be some fanfic right there. Is like the, it, you being that guy and what would happen next. Okay, let's move along. So that's an yeah. obvious one. This one, I think this person went through some phases, as 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 did a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. But um, also probably an easy one. Somebody that's really hard to root for. So no one will be too mad if we say bad things about her. 
and that hmm. is Jenny from Forrest Gump. Oh. Is she a dirty hippie? Hmm. So she's definitely a dirty, dirty hippie. And I'd almost say she's a dirty, filthy hippie. Mm. Because not only was she a hippie, but um, she kind of went through like trash personas of every decade. Because I think that she was, didn't she? Right. She starts out as a dirty hippie. And then yeah. she was like a 70s, like disco. Wasn't she like in some disco skank or something? Yeah, kind of yeah. She was, she, was, uh, she was doing parties where she was like doing coke and stuff. Like, it, yeah. like you said, she was basically whatever sort of skanky bad thing was going on in that yeah. whichever era. And then she might have had an encounter with Doc Bricker um, in the 80s, because I don't think that her story ends very well and don't want to make any humor of how she dies. Uh, well, but definitely, yeah. definitely a dirty, filthy hippie. And what, and interesting, interesting thought about Dr. Bricker there. What, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He, he got around too, didn't he? Oh, he did. Uh, um, so next on the list. Now, I take a lot of joy in these two. This is, this is a, a pair of uh, fictional. Mm -hmm. dudes and but if you think through the criteria okay. they might fit and that is beavis and butthead are they dirty oh. hippies no they're not dirty dirty hippies those guys are awesome yeah and they're also Good. they're lazy but in their own way and they have much better taste in music um than filthy hippies. So no, even though they're dressed up like hippies in that picture, that's a good one. That's a good way to try to bait me in to see if I'd <laughs> fall for it cuz somebody's got a they got the the uh, 70s TV show hippie vest on. Yeah. The picture, the picture is them as hippies. I, this is your game. You're the one that makes the, you know, yeah. I defer to you on, on whether or not they're dirty hippie. I really do. Um, but so far I've been in full agreement. I don't think they're hippies either. And th I, this was kind of the, I still thought this was kind of an easy one. Cause right. They're into yeah. metal and they're, but I, I, you know, it was a good way to say, good, but... it was a good way to check to see if I'd be baited. Uh, I'd fall for hippie bait. <laughs> Now, this next one, we've got three more. This next okay. one is where, it, to me, it gets hard because okay. this is somebody that I know we both like, mm -hmm. but it's going to be, I want to hear, I want to okay. hear you work through this one without, without any uh, more ado. And that is Neil Young. Hmm. So he's somebody that I would say kind of falls into a weird, maybe a uh, hypocritical Hippie uh, critical, maybe. Ah, well played. Uh, <laughs> space I've owned. So I definitely would say that he's a he's a dirty hippie. Um, but his music's pretty good. Or it was for a while. He's one of those guys that goes through so many phases yeah. that he had some other phase. Like I I I think I checked out in the mid-2000s with him. And I think there were some sort of like operas about the environment or something like that. Yeah. Was it green green land or green house yeah. or something? But I will give him credit for this. Um very talented. And I, I do like Neil Young, like sincerely yeah. like him, um, even if he is a dirty hippie. But he also somehow found a way to pull Daryl Hannah. Oh, I don't know that I knew that. Yeah, he's, oh, I, forgot um, that. I believe she he's actually incredible. married to Daryl Hannah. So maybe, you know, Neil Young, um, we talked about different definitions of a hobo. Maybe his, uh, you know, his hobo is taking care of, you yeah. know, maybe opening some doors at uh normal person with an expression and face like that uh, would not be able to pull off. So, you know, what? I'd say he's a dirty hippie, but I'm, I'm pro Neil Young. I'll give okay. him a pass. Yeah. I mean, I love him. And and you, you pointed out he's had like 25 albums and like, I love four of them, Yeah, but I don't, I didn't even listen to most of them. I mean, he's, he, he's an interesting guy. He's, yeah. I, I like him a lot also. Um, oh, I should have, I just thought of one I should have, I should do for next time, but okay. okay so we're saying yes, dirty hippie, but, but you still like them. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Well, that's you have other people like that who who are hippies that you still like. I mean, right? I mean, it's okay. Probably. Um, well, probably um, not. But that's, I, I, that's I, I'm not going to bring uh, Fleetwood Mac into this because okay, I, I, I thought about doing that, but I, uh, yeah, it would get confrontational. Course. Yeah. <laughs> this next one, this next one represents. I was trying to think. Okay, it's easy to find your Neil Youngs and your. I mean, there's a million people that. I mean, yeah, he 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 is a hippie. Uh, this next person is going to stand for sort of a group of people mm -hmm. which are, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and move on. So the, the next slide is Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal, if you see the, on the picture here, 
um, there's a little tweet below by some, by somebody, I don't know who that is, Jordan, that says, mm. not my boy Jake Gyllenhaal saying bathing and basic hygiene are, quote, unnecessary. So there are a number of celebrities that have come out like real recently, like in the last mm. few months. It's almost a movement of saying, like, I don't bathe. Like, mm. there's no point in bathing. I think I'm trying to think. I know Brad Pitt was was on the list. Um, Dax Shepard and his wife. I mean, there, there's there's a a dozen or so that have come out saying that they don't bathe. So he right. kind of represents. So would you put these people into the hippie basket or, or no? What are your thoughts? Mm. That's a very good one. So I have absolutely no respect really for any actors. The older I've gotten is just basically these people are vapid shells right. who are good performers, but there's um, actually it was Tim Dillon brought up a point that I thought was really good on one of his shows of like, you know, the better an actor is, Mm -hmm. almost like the less there is there in their head mm -hmm. because they have to inhabit so many different worlds and characters and that you do that for a while, whoever the real you is, is, you know, becomes mm -hmm. another shade of that. So I'd imagine with somebody at his income level of he's somebody that probably thinks he's not bathing, but instead is soaking himself in some sort of like thousand dollar lotion every night or, or something else. Yeah. You know, there's some yeah. sort of like, in you know, uh, high powered scent cover or someone's tricked him into saying, you know, this is magic soap that doesn't clean you or something like that. Right. Um, so, um, I don't know, probably, I, I, I don't know if he Gotta angered think about me at criteria. So he's dirty. Well, he's, he's, he says he's dirty. He's, he's, he's also not, dirty. not smart he's enough dirty. to figure out that he's, he's not really dirty. He's not hippie dirty. He's yeah. not laying on a flea writ written a uh, mattress with Charles Manson doing acid right, right. Uh, swimming in his own urine. No. So vapid actor, but not dirty, dirty, not a dirty hippie. Okay. So we got one more and okay. so far we've got, we've got three dirty hippies. One of which you like, mm -hmm. we have Beavis and Butthead, not dirty hippies, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal and his ilk, not dirty hippies. Yeah. The very, the last one, I thought this would be hard. Now I want you to think okay. this one through before you answer. Okay. Because you might want to go one way immediately. Um, and uh, that is the aforementioned Dr. Bricker. Is Dr. Bricker a dirty hippie? And you got to think uh, about all the criteria here. Mm -hmm. So free love. I, definitely free love. Um, man, uh, I believe on the show had four or five wives and pretty much was giving somebody the business every episode, his hobo made it all the way around that boat <laughs> and probably with everybody on the cast too. So Dex, definitely the, the sexual liberation aspect of it. Um, I would see that and not in a perverse Charles Manson way of using that and then making women kill people or getting them pregnant. <laughs> um, well, even though he probably did get some people pregnant, but, uh, he often talks about how he had all the money he has to pay on alimony. So whereas he did, right. uh, do, he was sexually, maybe a little too sexually liberated. However, he also was a doctor. Mm -hmm. So he made money. He wasn't lazy. He's also very clean. Love Boat's a pristine place. You're not, you know, if he's going to be doling it out the way he did, he's got to keep things clean. So I like yeah. that you brought this up, but Doc Bricker, uh, one of the greatest I'd, hero, dare I say, in American television, one of the greatest characters ever, uh, great actor, great character probably did spread some diseases, but in the end he's doc. He's and doc. Um, I should resurrect that picture that I sent you of uh, the one episode where he was wearing a pair of tiny um, oh, yes. cashmere shorts that had uh, very delicately displayed each testicle separately. <laughs> um, very graphically <laughs> right. to be frank with you. And I probably yeah. will resurrect that picture for um, our Instagram, which you can find us at Speaksies. Um, but Doc Bricker, definitely not a dirty, dirty hippie. All right. Well, that has been the second installment of Are They a Dirty, Dirty Hippie? Thanks for playing along. So to wrap up the history of hobo, um, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, is hobo an offensive term? And I think one reason people think of that now is it's kind of synonymous with being homeless. Um, hobos in that time, were homeless, but not in a way I think we conceive it in the in our modern era. They didn't want to have a home. They traveled. Um, they were, you know, didn't have a home, but intentionally. And not in like the modern San Francisco, you know, I don't have a home because I'm jacked up on heroin and, and fentanyl. 
and I have, you know, I should be in a mental institution. I think these were guys that are almost like willingly homeless. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, and again, not to denigrate homeless people, but, you know, we know in, of the, the rising homeless problem throughout the country, especially in larger cities, where it's basically uh, people maybe with good intentions have allowed a situation of mentally ill people and also drug users that has now become some sort of identity to be proud of that in mm -hmm. the same way that with someone's race or culture, you don't want to denigrate them by making them stop doing drugs and mm. get a job. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the, the main reason um, I don't think hobo is an offensive term or it's really a, a offensive thing is because of clowns. So mm -hmm. I don't think kids do it much anymore, but you and your mind can almost picture watching an old TV show where some you know, it's Halloween and somebody's dressed up like a hobo. Mm -hmm. They're not dressing like hobos as, direct references to people on the railroad they're dressing up because that's what clowns dressed up like you don't see yeah. a clown and go oh that's an august clown or that's a white face clown think of them as clowns hobos when a kid's dressed up like a hobo they're basically dressing up like a clown yeah yeah so it's not like hobo cultural appropriation it's just yeah. dressing like a clown and, and now they, they might you mentioned before mm -hmm. some hobo communities uh frown on the clown yeah thing but and maybe it would actually be a use of uh i think you and i both agree that cultural appropriation is a silly term um but if the hobo union number 63 is still around they might have something <laughs> to say about uh your kid dressing up like a, a hobo so i don't think it's something yeah. though at the same time um i don't see myself trying to rouse someone's child to go spend their what they need to do for halloween and spend their time dressed up like a hobo they get a lot of probably uh, cross looks mainly because people would associate that with being homeless. And if you need a last second Halloween idea for a late Halloween party, there's always Connecticut slim. Mm. And I wonder if Connecticut slim, the slim was ironic. Maybe he was a big fat guy. You never know. Well, I left a lot of hobo uh, information on the table. So maybe there's a chance for a hobo part two somewhere. Who I, knows? I would love to do a hobo part two. This has been a blast. Well, thank you for listening to Origin of Speaksies. Uh, we appreciate it. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star review like this one from Sammy's Mule. Subject, great show. Just wanted to give some positive feedback for you guys. Great show. I came for the Mike Bidet interview and ended up subscribing. I dig it. Thank you, Sammy's Mule, for that five-star review. Remember, we're now on YouTube, so search Origin of Speaksies on YouTube or click the link at speaksies.com slash listen. And lastly, we have a brand new merch store up and running uh, on T Public. So just in time for the cold weather, if you're looking for a hoodie or you need a pillow with our logo on it or pretty much any product that you can think of, uh, it, we've got it at T Public. You can go to speaksies.com. Uh, for the link to our merch store and again we appreciate you listening thank you for all the support and of course to our patrons at patreon.com speaksees thank you for making this show possible all right steve bob's your uncle watch out for bears and kale is from the dump speaksees 